for the room itself, for the walls, it's quite straightforward. We'll just call this one wall. So in this case, by the way, I selected this entire wall object. And I'm just renaming that material to be called wall. The default should be okay. I might just make it a slight grayish color and give it a slightly creamy colored wall. Like so. Uh, but the default as is should be okay. For the floor, maybe you might go with a tile kind of texture. So let's uh, select all these faces from the bottom. So make sure you're in face select mode and then just tap into edit mode and select these faces over here by shift clicking. Click this plus button, create a new material, we'll call this one floor. And this can be sort of any kind of texture you want. We might go for a more darker texture maybe. Yeah, maybe like a darker darker gray but it should probably have a little bit more of a smoother look so we'll turn down the roughness so it's almost like a mirror a little bit and clear coat a little bit should be okay as well I think that should be good enough so let's go ahead and hit assign so it will assign this material to the floor so if I go to viewport display Make this one grey as well. You can see what I mean. So this wall is white, but this ground is uh, sort of dark and black. Uh, for the top itself, we'll make this one to be uh, even more wider than the wall. Okay, so for the ceiling, we'll go ahead and hit plus again. Create new material for the ceiling. We'll go ahead and hit assign. And we'll make this one even more brighter. We now have materials for every single element in our scene. So to make it look even better, to make it look almost as close to looking as good as this, which obviously you can learn if you uh, enroll in my course, you can learn how to create photorealistic interior scenes like this. So how to get those awesome looking reflections, how to create this carpet, how to create um, nice looking glass and all these um, elements over here. So if you want to go ahead and learn that, go ahead and sign up for the Creating Beautiful Interiors in Blender course. But this one that I'm creating here is just a very simple scene. Okay, so let's now go ahead and work on the lighting now. Okay, so for the lighting right now it's giving a very dull grey colour and there are no shadows anywhere which breaks the realism. So since Eevee is not a photorealistic render, we need to be able to get shadows and indirect lighting and all this stuff to make it look a little bit more photorealistic. So the first thing we want to do is, well, this is what I tend to find, turn off the background world color. Just keep it black, because I feel like that tends to affect the shadows a lot. So I pretty much tend to just turn it off completely. So if you want to get that natural skylight, what I would do instead, let's just go back to this node over here, is I would add in uh, fake lights over here to simulate skylight. So let's go to the 3D cursor. Let's click over here, let's go Shift A, Add Light, Area Light, and let's rotate this one on the red one over here by 90 or oh, minus 90 degrees so that it faces over here. Let's move it up and let's go ahead and go to the light properties, the object data properties, turn up the size, and we'll change the shape from a square to a rectangle. So let's turn off the size of the X to fit this window, like so, and then also on the Y axis, okay, so that it encases the entire window. Let's move this out on the Y axis, and what we'll do is we'll give it a light blue color, just a very light blue color, to simulate the skylight. Okay, so if I look at that in rendered mode, you can see that it sort of does a job, but maybe we can increase the strength to maybe something like 30. That should be fine. Okay, so we'll want to go ahead and duplicate this light onto this window as well. Okay, so object, uh, duplicate, and then let's hit uh, X to constrain it on the X axis and move it onto this window. As you can see, even though it doesn't look like real skylight yet, we'll get there we are starting to get these shadows over here so i think the strength is too strong so let's make it more subtle maybe 10 same with this one 10 and the light isn't really traveling the distance which is not 
what I want. Might go. I should just go 15. And for this one, 15. Okay, so even though it isn't traveling the distance, maybe when we do the global illumination calculation, it would be a lot more realistic. But the next thing that we want to do now is want to add in a sunlight. So we want to have some sun rays streaming through our window. Uh, to do that, we just need to go ahead and add in a sunlight, like so. Let's move it up over here. Let's rotate it. Uh, we can rotate it using this uh, as well. Same thing. Let's rotate it so that it faces sort of this direction, maybe. Uh, maybe not too extreme. Okay. So we have something that looks like that. Uh, let's make the strength of it be 8. Uh, let's give it a slight yellowish tinge. Okay, so now we're starting to see that it looks more like sunlight and oh, the shadows aren't falling in correctly because it's way above the surface. So let's move it down on the z-axis so that it looks right. So still the problem remains that the uh, scene over here, our internal room is too dark. So we need some bounce lighting to go on over here to make sure that our entire room is lit. So to do that, the final real step that we need to do is let's go ahead and go to the 3D cursor, put it somewhere over here. Let's go ahead and add in a light probe and irradiance volume. Okay, so this is what an irradiance volume looks like. This is what it will be used to give us that photorealism goodness. So let's move it up and let's scale it so that it, it encompasses the entire scene. So let's scale up like so and then let's move it in the Y. Let's scale up on the on that much maybe. And let's scale out on the X so that it just covers the entire scene. Let's double check it from the height. Okay, that's looking good. So it encompasses the entire scene. These little points over here is just purely used to help the calculation of the light bounces. I think using these, the default over here should be fine. So let's just give this a quick bake and see how that looks. And there we go. Just like magic, we have global illumination in our scene. So if I just close this eye tool over here, we've baked in indirect lighting in our scene. So as you can see, there's this little bit of these little artifacts over here, and that's purely because of the number of, where's the irradiance volume? The, the resolution of it. So the higher you make this resolution, the less artifacty it will appear. Also, you can see there's a little bit of light leaks going on over here. I think this is a problem with Blender's EV. I think it's, it has a lot to do with the way the algorithm is implemented with this one. That's why you get these light leaks. It's a real shame. I really wish EV didn't have this because I don't see this happening in other real-time render engines like Unreal Engine. And it didn't even happen in Blender's internal render, which is a prehistoric render. Hopefully in the future, Blender will fix this, this light leak issue and there won't be any extra work required by artists to do this themselves. One way to do it is by amping up this thickness over here. It's making it really, really thick. But if that doesn't work, Another and obviously it won't work now because we've already baked in the lighting. So no matter how thick you make it, uh, it's not going to work. So going ahead and baking the indirect lighting again. Or another workaround is to go to the render properties over here. Go to ambient occlusion and just go ahead and tick that. And that will go ahead and remove a lot of that, that noise. And might, might increase the distance to help it. So it just help to add in a bit more depth to your scene make it look a little bit more realistic. If you want, you can go ahead and add in some bloom effects to give it a nice little bit of shine. You can decrease the threshold to add more bloom to your scene, but I wouldn't overuse this one, so I'd, I'd keep it very, very subtle. Something like that. Subtlety in art can actually make your renders look even nicer. The floor, I'm not too impressed with, to be honest. There's no reflections going on, which is sort of what I was going for. So let's go to the floor settings, make the roughness quite low. As of Blender 2.83, you have to do some extra work in order to see the reflectivity. So in the render settings, go ahead and tick screen space reflections. So straight away, we can see our reflective floor. 
I guess what I was going to also do next is sometimes you have to also go down and change the bend mode to alpha hashed and opaque to alpha hashed as well so that you can see what's going on but in this case I think the floor is looking way too reflective now so I might actually bump up that roughness actually bump it down it might make the floor a little bit more darker uh, well actually it might make it more wider yeah something like that should be good we're getting that nice reflection going on over there. So let's go ahead and hit save and as for the most part I think that's pretty much it.